Fame and the Board of Directors of the Pro Football Hall of Fame Luncheon Club, I call to order the sixth meeting of our 62nd year of the Pro Football Hall of Fame Luncheon Club. Invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, will be given by Pastor Jamie Waters from the Real Hope Church in Jackson Township. Thank you, thank you. It, it's so good to be back with you all. Uh, I just appreciate the invitation to be here. How fun is it to be up on the desk with my buddy Super Bowl champion Walt Downing over here? Um, I always tell Walt at church that we are a people of grace and forgiveness, you know, because he went to that school that we don't like to talk about. <laughs> but it's true. And um, the other thing, I, you know, I never mentioned when I'm with you that, uh, you know, I also serve as your Stark County reporter. And our, our good friend, Commissioner Richard Regula, is here. We're both on the ballot, so I just remind you of that <laughs> before we pray. So if you, if you would pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to, to come together and share in a meal and fellowship. Lord, we are living in uh, uh, broken and fractured times, in divisive times. Lord, we thank you that sports are there to bring communities together. We thank you for all the good things that sports brings us in our lives. We thank you for the Hall of Fame Luncheon Club. We thank you for Dennis and all its leaders. Lord, this morning we, we thank you for our friends from Walsh University. I want to pray for Dr. Collins, for Jason, for Cornell, and for Kelly this morning. Lord, you know better than we do that life is full of troubles. It is full of ups and downs. It is full of joys and blessings. So Lord, as we go through some of those down times, perhaps, Lord, just remind us that you are here with us. You are close to us. We can always turn to you, no matter what we are dealing with. Lord, we, we love you and we praise you. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, joining me at the head table today, to my right, your left, Walt Downing, University of Michigan, San Francisco 49 Super Bowl 16 champion. Pastor Jamie Waters. On my left, your right, Dr. Tim Collins. We also have Jason Fox, who's Director of Rugby Operations. His wife, Cindy. And we have the men's Rugby coach Cornell and the women's rugby coach Kelly. I'd like to recognize our club sponsors All Cares Primetime Healthcare, Dr. Peter Ferguson, Liberty Ford, Marion Mountain Memorial Scholarship Fund, the Bistro of Green, and Wiltshire Golf Club. Congratulations to the Cleveland Guardians for winning the ALDS in a dramatic yes. fashion. The Guardians now move on to the ALCS against the New York Yankees. It was a tough loss, tough weekend, a tough loss for both the Buckeyes and the Browns. If you're, if, still, if you're interested, we still have uh, speaker schedules available, and they're on the back table. The best way to stay in touch with the club is to join the Hall of Fame Luncheon Club Facebook page. Our first meeting at the Hall of Fame will be on Monday, October 28th. We are selling tickets today, and again after the meeting, and we'll also sell tickets on the 21st. The meeting will take place at the Nash Family Event and Conference Center on the campus of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All attendees must purchase a ticket to attend, $17 for members, $22 for guests. Due to the construction going on at the Nash Family Event Center, please enter through the Hall of Fame main entrance. The speaker for that day will, is still to be determined. 
Handicap parking will be in the lower lot. Shuttle buses from the upper lot will be available to bring, down, bring you down to the entrance. Golf carts will also be available. This week, Hall of Famer Kevin Mowai will be here in Canton this week as part of the Hall of Fame residency program. The Hall of Fame is now requiring us to give them a head count two weeks prior to our Hall of Fame meetings. Therefore, we will begin selling tickets for our second meeting at the Hall of Fame on, mo on Monday, October 4th, I'm sorry, on Monday, November 4th, and again on November 11th. Our meeting will take place on November 25th at the Hall of Fame. My quote for the day is, is a quote from Lou Hulse. I quote, I follow three rules. Do the right thing, do the best you can, and always show people you care. Let's do the 50-50. The winning jackpot today is $184. <laughs> My new best friend. <laughs> okay, the winning number is one zero nine zero three one. Yes. One zero nine zero three one. There it is. Ozzy. Here we go. Right there. Congratulations. Isn't he disqualified? He's got Pittsburgh stuff on. <laughs> All right, thank you. Next week, our speaker, our, our speaker next week will be Becca Moore. She's the author of a book called Maslin Tigers, and she's also the wife of head football coach of Maslin, Nate Moore. Now to introduce our speakers today, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tim Collins, President of Walsh University. All right, thank you, Mr. President. So, um, swords up. So this, this is how we say hello at Walsh University. You know, in the 1950s, it was at a Friday night pep rally at the University of Texas when the male cheerleader, the head male cheerleader, decided hook em horns is what they needed to do the next day. 53,000 people in the stadium the next day went hook em horns. The Gators do this, the Braves do this, we do this. So how about swords up for Walsh? Swords up. Swords up. That's just how we say hello. So I want to thank Tazis for a great meal. Thank you to the, to the wait staff. How about a round of applause for the, for the great meal? I also want to thank all the sponsors of the Luncheon Club that are here. I'm a beggar as well, so I want to thank all the sponsors that are here. I see Altman back there. One of my sponsors is too. Swords up, sir. Swords up. Well, Pastor, I think you're right. You know, we do live in a very divisive society right now, and if we ever needed sports, we need it now. We need it now more than ever. So what many of you may not know is right now today in America, there are five generations in the workforce. This is the first time in American history we've ever had five generations in the workforce at the same time. And the students that are coming on college campuses now are named already as the least worked generation in American history. 80% of them that are stepping on college campuses have never worked outside the home. So just let that sink in for just a little bit about what they don't know. What they don't know about being on time, what they don't know about finishing the job, what they don't know about saying something when they can't get it done. They don't know any of that. And they're coming out here. So at Walsh University, one of the things that we're focused on heavily are sports. I consider sports to be the largest leadership laboratory on our campus. We, we now have 27 different sports at Walsh University. 27 different sports. We have over 800 athletes on our campus. And we're, all, we're having a great year right now. So we have 96% of our 10 resident halls are filled with students. So we really, really, really love sports. And we love it because it teaches them all the things the culture won't teach them. 
Won't teach them about teamwork. Won't teach them about taking care of each other. Won't teach them about digging it out. Won't teach them about falling down on their ass and getting back up. Right? Amen to that, Pastor. Amen. So this spring, some of you may know Notre Dame College in Euclid, Ohio, up in Cleveland, it closed. Announced its closure in February, I think, and then it closed at the end of the year. And they had uh, about 600 students that needed a place to go. They also had men's and women's rugby. So my athletic director comes to me one day in early March or something, and she says, hey, Jason Fox called and wants to know, is Walsh interested in having rugby on our campus? And I said, yes. That's right. And she said, well, do you want to talk about it? I said, what is there to talk about? Jason Fox is a giant in the rugby world. Both those teams are championship teams. We have lots of land around us. They like to play on grass, not turf. I have a lot of grass. Of course we'll take those teams. And so we now have men's and women's rugby. So they're off to a good season. I'm going to hand you over to them in just a second. But when the coaches' preseason poll came out, ranking them, the very first sentence in the article said, for the first time in intercollegiate athletic history, an institution with a brand new sport begins the season as the number one seed. <laughs> so if you don't know anything about rugby, I'm here to tell you there's only one thing you need to know, Jason Fox. So I want to introduce to you the Director of Rugby Operations at Walsh University, Jason Fox. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure I, I like that, uh, the fact that we were got the Sports Illustrated jinx right away. <laughs> All right, at least we weren't on the uh, page of a, um, of a uh, magazine, but um, it, was, it was good. So um, thank you, Dr. Collins. Thank you, everybody, um, staff. Um, this is my second time here. I, I came um, with Carlin Isles um, when he spoke, and that was uh, a tremendous, tremendous message that he had. Um, I've known Carlin for a long time, um, so, um, you know, it was great uh, to see him succeed. Um, actually, uh, when, when I got a call from one of my friends that's now working at, um, that was at Notre Dame College, that ended up coming over to Walsh, I was just jokingly said, hey, how about we start a program at Walsh? And so it went back and forth, and then I got the call from Christina, and then that's kind of how it started, and then we started, um, you know, the process. But um, my history um, is much like Carlin's. Um, I'm not as fast, um, but, um, you know, I, I was an inner city kid in Cleveland, played basketball, baseball, football um, at the rec department, you know, grew up. Um, you know, I was a public school kid that was going to get bussed. I don't know if anybody remembers busing up in Cleveland yeah. back in 78. Um, I'm not sure how popular that was. Um, and it, the, uh, so instead of getting bused across town, I found a, a place at St. Edward High School, um, not too far from where I grew up. Didn't know where it was. Um, you know, I kind of uh, did well there. I excelled at track, um, cross country, football at St. Ed's. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I, was, I was later inducted in the Hall of Fame um, in 2000 by Dan Coglin. And, and, Rest his peace, I just went to his uh, wake yesterday. Um, I can't tell you, it was about a three hour wait uh, to see him going through the halls of St. Ed's and it was great to be back you know, in my alma mater. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving here to go to the after funeral party that all Irish you know, funerals have. Um, so that's probably gonna be going until about four or five. So um, if I gotta take off right away, I just wanna try and make it there. And, Dan Coggan was a very, very close friend of mine. Um, I coached both of his kids um, in, in rugby at St. Ed's. He became an avid um, uh, supporter of rugby. Um, every time we played, he would be out there. Um, he was, you know, like I said, in my induction Hall of Fame, my induction Hall of Fame into the, the greater Cleveland rugby thing. So um, he's just uh, close, near and dear to my heart. Both his kids are still coaching rugby, and that's how big rugby's growing. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, 
put the photo. Um, after, um, after I left St. Ed's, I ended up getting a, a scholarship to the University of Houston, um, where I excelled at track for the first couple of years, and I kind of got big and decided to stop running. So I tried to walk on the football team down at University of Houston. And if you're not from Texas, they're not looking at you. So uh, I found rugby, I fell in love with it, came back, joined the fire department, married my lovely wife, Cindy Anzalone Fox, I had a couple kids, um, and um, kind of just kept playing rugby. Um, I was also uh, able to travel around the world like Carlin Isles did back before Sevens became kind of, uh, had money behind it. So um, that was very thrilling to me. I was also able to coach the U.S. national team in, in Argentina and, and, and uh, Uruguay um, that Carl, Carlin played on later on. Um, problem with that was there was no money. I had two kids, a wife, and a job. And my wife was like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, my lovely wife over here, Cindy Ann's holding Fox, is a, uh, she went to, we both went to University of Houston together. We met at age 16 at a track meet. Ended up going to college together at University of Houston. She was an All-American, ran with people like Carl Lewis, Carol Lewis, and some big names. So um, if you want to talk track, she doesn't want to talk, and she'll tell you all about um, track. So, um, you know, it's great to have her on my side. Being an athlete, she's been supportive of rugby since day one. Um, it's just been, it's been a you know, thrill to have a wife that supports me and supports rugby. Um, Sometimes not all my friends in rugby, but um, you know that, that goes um, without saying. Um, so, like I said, um, uh, after I stopped um, my collegiate, I'm sorry, my, my playing career, and I stopped my coaching career at the U.S. level, I said, "Well, what am I going to do now?" Went back to St. Ed's and helped start a rugby program, the first rugby program, in 1999. Um, we had five teams back in the day in Northeast Ohio. Um, I think San Ignatius started about five years later. Um, now we're up to uh, how many teams? 40, 50 in Ohio? Um, I got the Perry uh, crew here, the youth rugby, and they had 50 youth rugby out to our game the other night on a Friday night. And Perry's doing a great job. Hands, hands. Um, you can see you seen youth rugby explode all over. Um, at San Ignatius, on every, any one Sunday, you'll have 850 to 900 kindergartners through eighth grade playing rugby now. So it's just really um, taken off um, in ways that you know, I couldn't imagine. Um, I was at St. Ed's for 10 years after I left St. Ed's because my son started um, going to school at St. Ed's and he started playing rugby. Um, I didn't want to coach my son because he doesn't listen to me at home. <laughs> Definitely not going to listen to me on the field. So I said now's a good time for me to step back and be a dad and a, uh, a cheerleader. Um, I helped start programs around the uh, greater Cleveland area. I talked to ADs about the low cost, high participation value of rugby. The first thing the ADs say, you know, what's this going to cost me? And my, my answer was zero. We will get uniforms donated, balls donated. We will get our referees, things like that, taken care of. I'm in. So now you've seen it grow to, you know, uh, just great numbers. Um, in 2012, I was approached by Notre Dame College to come and help start a program in a college level. Um, we uh, have had some considerable success at, at Notre Dame College over those past 12 years. We were able to win two national championships um, while there, and I did bring my championship rings with me, um, but they don't fit on my knuckles anymore because I got a little bigger, so I got to keep them in my pocket. If you'd like to see them, I have them in my, uh, in my pocket. Um, so we've had a considerable success. We play against the best countries, uh, teams in the country, Army, Navy, Penn State. So as we grew, um, last year we won a national championship. We come home and say, congratulations, we're closing the school. Here's your rings, goodbye. Um, so that's when I went to visit four, uh, three different uh, universities, went to Hiram, went to Mercyhurst, and I went to Walsh. Out of those three, Walsh felt like a home. I walked around and was blown away by the, the, everybody that was there, by Dr. Collins, by the AD, by everybody. The hospitality, um, the caring, it was, it was amazing. So I went, uh, that was on a Monday, I went to visit Mercyhurst on Tuesday, and that was a nice college, nice campus. I, I visited Hiram a, a little bit before. So I went back to the kids, and the kids just won a national championship, both men and women. I said, what do you guys want to do? Now at this point, they're getting calls from the top programs in the country saying, 
come to our school, come to our school, Life University, uh, Lindenwood University, all these schools, and the coach, I'm getting a call from this and that and the other. I'm like, well, listen, hold tight, sit tight. I, we might have something in the making here. Um, I just retired from the Cleveland Fire Department after 34 years, so I thought, well, is this the time to step away from rugby too? And I, I decided, no, absolutely not. So the kids were like, yeah, coach, we'd like to stay together. We'd like to keep this together. 50 kids, 50 men, 25 women, our coaching staff right here were like, what can we do? Went down, uh, on Friday, that was Wednesday, they decided to stay together. Friday, Walsh sends a bus up in Vance to pick up all 75 students and drive them down to Walsh. Now, we get down there, and guess the first thing they saw when they got off that bus? Swords up! <laughs> that would be it, right? And then from there, I've never seen it. My wife was there. Um, we were blown away. They were treated like D1 athletes at The Ohio State, getting treated to a, you know, a recruitment. And it's never happened in rugby. I was in tears. My wife was in tears. We were just like, this is amazing. Balloons, the whole nine yards, um, you know, and the kids were, you know, doing everything. And, and uh, after the visit, the guys got back on the bus, the women got back on the bus. Kelly was there, and, and we said, okay, I want you to write down the good and the bad, the pros and the cons of Walsh. I'll set up a trip to Mercier's. I can set up a trip to, to Hiram. And they're like, coach, uh, we don't need to go anywhere else. I said, really? I said, we found our home. I said, are you sure? So we don't want to muddy up the waters. We don't want a couple kids saying we like this. We don't want a couple kids saying we found a home here. And I said, all right. And of course, that's what I wanted to hear because that was my first choice. So I get off the bus, feeling good now, walked up. The president said, guess what? Swords up. You got a rugby team. So since then, we had to work out the details of, you know, Hey, we're going to give you the field here. We're going to do this for you, that for you. They have not backed off on one of their promises that I've seen right now, and they've been brilliant at bringing our kids over. They had to match kind of costs. They had to figure out where the kids were in their degree. I mean, it was a very huge undertaking, quite honestly, to kind of bring over 75 young men and women and figure things out. So I couldn't be, I know there's a guy, obviously, because he opens doors, all right? And, and he opened a big door for these young men and women, and definitely for me. Uh, I love it down here, I love it in Canton. Um, I'm a Cleveland kid, I work for the Cleveland Fire Department. I think they're sick of me up here, up there. So I have a new home down here, and I'll give you a couple years to get sick of me, and then I'll go back home, right? Is that fair? But, um, you know, I, I can't say enough about what, what Walsh has done, and we look at, uh, we look at winning. A couple more of these. Right. And I will say this, uh, as, long as, we have, as long as we have coaches that are dedicated to youth rugby, like Perry, like some of the uh, other areas, Jackson and some of the other programs that we're seeing get started with youth rugby, we're going to put America back on top and we're just a sleeper giant as far as rugby goes. They're just waiting for, you know, guys like LeBron and those guys to start playing rugby. And all of a sudden, guess what? We're going to be a, a you know we're going to be a beast. So it's going to happen. I'm going to take some time, but I will say this about rugby: rugby social atmosphere um, and everything about rugby. From when we play after the game, we feed the team and we get together and we talk to them and we hang out with them. It's not really done in any other sport. Um, and I, by the way, I did a lot of history. The opposing team. What's that? With the opposing I'm sorry, team. with the opposing team. So when Army or Navy or whoever comes in after the game, we'll have pizza with them, we'll chat with them, we'll talk, the guys talk back and forth. It's kind of that, that social kind of atmosphere that you want to see, especially at a Catholic um, a university. Um, but I, I really think that um, we're heading in the right direction and we have the greatest two coaches um, to take over the men's and women's program. I just kind of sit, sit back and and help them when they need something, but they're doing all the work. They're, they're dealing with the, the, the athletes, they're planning practices, um, they're doing a great job. So um, once again, I did a lot of homework on the difference between rugby and or where football came from in rugby. So after the question, I have my answer, so I'm ready for you guys.
Uh, but without further ado, I want to uh, introduce the women's head coach, Kelly Walhorst. By the way, I've known Kelly for many years. I worked with her father. I've seen her since she's this, this big, starting her rugby career, and now I'm so happy to have her as a colleague. Kelly, come on, say a couple of I don't know if I can top that one at all. Um, thank you guys for having me. Obviously, very new to the whole coaching thing. Rugby, not so much. A little bit about me. I started playing over nine years ago. I was playing at Notre Dame College, obviously. Um, high school, I played at Parma, so it was a club team, nothing big. I went to Padua Franciscan High School. We didn't have it, it wasn't a main sport. They didn't even let me try and recruit there. Um, they didn't want to draw away from the other sports. I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to go play at NDC, and I'm glad the time I had there, it was phenomenal. I graduated in 2022. Then went right back and was like, yep, I'm going to get my master's and play rugby some more. And my parents were like, oh, great, more years you can get hurt. Um, but then, obviously, I got out in time. I finished my graduate degree in the fall of 2023, and I was sticking around just volunteering coaching, honestly. Um, I wanted to stay involved with the sport. Wasn't ready to give it up yet, but wasn't ready to, you know, get that real big girl job, right? And so... NEC closed down, and I remember Fox called me up the one day. I don't even remember what I was doing. He was just like, Kelly, he's like, what do the girls want to do? I'm like, honestly, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to play for another coach. They don't want to split up. We've built something special. It's not just a team, it's a family, and they didn't want to lose what they had. So they were going to go to Cleveland State. They were going to finish their degrees, and then he was like, all right, well, how about you coach them? I was like, hold on a second. Are you being serious? And he was like, absolutely. I'm like, I can get behind that, and I can coach. And he's like, okay, I remember we had a meeting with the team and he told the girls, he's like, well, let's, let's pack up and let's go to another school. And they were like, okay, yeah, this is exciting. They were like, well, what about our coach? Because if we have someone new that's gonna come in and kind of disturb our little family, we don't want it anymore. And he's like, hold on, slow down. And he goes, what if you know her and she's in the room and everybody turned and looked at me and they were just like, are you serious? And I was like, I will coach you guys if you trust me too. I've never had the experience. Obviously I played with you, never coached you. And they're like, all right, when do we go? So just having that support with the team and obviously Fox trusted me enough to give me um, that opportunity and this chance to grow in life really, um, it's been a huge opportunity and I'm definitely taking advantage of it. The girls have been nothing but the best as well. I thought it was going to be tricky going from a teammate to a coach and right, I've got the responsibilities now and we can't run around and laugh all the time but it's still great and trust me rugby players know how to have a great time and so it's been it's been really amazing. So I can't wait to see where, where this team goes this year and to be able to recruit from you know, teams like Perry and get to talk to high schoolers and give them the same opportunities that I had throughout college to go to school and you know, get a degree because I told them, you know, my number one is setting you guys up for success outside of school and rugby. If you want to try and get to that next level of play you know, at the high level, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to get you there. But my number one priority is getting you guys set up for life and you know, like we mentioned earlier, having that leadership skills and the teamwork and communication abilities, I want every girl on my team to have and take that to the next level with them. So I'm just very thankful to be where I'm at today. I'm very proud of her. I can't, you can't say enough. Um, I, I did work with her father um, on the fire department. He's still um, on the department, so um, I'm just uh, thrilled. Um, for the men's side, um, you know, I had been coaching for a while and kind of stepped back to be a director. And, and, and with rugby, it's such a big sport, and as you know, it takes a lot to do a program well. So you kind of need a director and let these guys coach, and I can deal with the you know, all the, the other stuff, the NSA stuff, the, 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 you know, all that stuff. So um, we had, um, I brought in a, uh, a GA, a graduate assistant at Notre Dame a couple years ago, and uh, he was actually start, first started working with the women's team. So he's actually Kelly's coach at the time. And then we kind of took him over to the men's side when we won a national championship. And our coach went back to uh, Australia, and I was like, okay, we want to keep this thing rolling, similar to the women. We want we don't want to kind of um, get somebody new in that doesn't know the kind of uh, culture and the and the togetherness that we have on the men's side. So 
Um, I reached out to Cornell Brits, who um, came, comes from South Africa. Um, he's from Stellenbosch University, which is arguably, arguably the best university in the world for rugby. I mean, South Africa is huge. As a matter of fact, South Africa, you have rugby, and then you have rugby, and then rugby. <laughs> and maybe some cricket and soccer down here, but, but rugby, rugby, rugby. Um, and so it's great that his knowledge of rugby, he's played semi professional, he's, he's, he really knows the sport, he's uh, you know learning um, everything here. So I'm excited about Cornell Brits as our men's head coach. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would first like you to just thank you for the time to be here. Um, so my name is Cornel Brits. My full name is Berger Cornelius Brits, but I can understand that's a bit hard to pronounce. So it's just like the university, Cornell University. Um, my rugby journey started quite uh, young. I think I was four or five years old when I first started playing rugby. My third birthday cake actually was a rugby ball as well. <laughs> so I've been, uh, I've been crazy about the sport since day one. Um, I was in a, uh, I live about 40 minutes away from Cape Town in South Africa, I don't know if you know that, uh, I've come from the Strand, it's actually uh, the Afrikaans word for beach, so I'm a kid, uh, growing up uh, on the beach. <coughs> um, yeah, and rugby has always been my passion, in high school is the only thing like, when everybody's like, what do you want to go do when you're done with high school, and I was like, geez, the only thing I really enjoy is rugby, so I'd love to become a rugby coach even in high school. Um, I was lucky enough actually to coach in high school in my last year. Um, our third team was called the Wine Team for certain reasons. And then I was lucky enough to coach our under 14 C team, which we then nicknamed the Grape. Uh, yeah, the Grape. Uh, uh, what do you? Yeah, the Grape Team. Um, yeah, so after school, I was lucky enough to go play semi professional rugby for the Griffins. Our, our nickname was the Purple People Eaters. It's quite tough to say a few times in a row. We enjoyed a, quite a bit of success there. We won the under-19 Curry Cup uh, competition B division. I was lucky enough to play with some superstars who later on went on to uh, represent our country and make a big name for themselves. Uh, after that, I went to the Central University of Technology in Bloemfontein. Once again, I was lucky enough to play rugby at quite a high level. We won the university's uh, B division competition that's held every year in South Africa. Um, after that, I decided I want to go back home, be a bit closer to home, and go to Stellenbosch University, which is the biggest rugby club uh, on earth. Um, so I really enjoyed my time there. I studied there for three years. I was lucky enough to coach at Paul Ruiz Gymnasium as well, which is probably one of the best, uh, biggest rugby schools in the country. They've produced the most Springboks as well. Um, rugby has always been my passion. It's something I truly love. Uh, one of the things that really stands out about rugby to me is that it's a sport for all shapes and sizes. Like when I was over here, I'm a strength and conditioning coach as well. Uh, I coached the basketball team. It was the first time in my life that I felt like the shortest person in the room. It was quite an adjustment for me to get used to. So the, the whole thing about rugby that's really special to me is the fact that it is for all shapes and sizes. You've got six foot seven, six foot eight guys playing, but then the best player in the world currently is five foot eight and he's the best guy on the field and people are saying he's the best guy to ever, ever play the game. So just the fact that there is a space for everyone, like everybody is welcome, everybody, we want you to be there. We love having you a part of our team. And like Foxy mentioned earlier, the whole thing about having a couple of cold ones after you just played 80 minutes against each other, trying to hurt each other, trying to go as hard as you can, right after the match, you shake each other's hand and we join and we listen, we learn to, uh, from our opponents. So we really enjoy that aspect of rugby. Um, as far as for myself, uh, after I was done studying, I was lucky enough to go to RTS Rosday. Uh, it's a town, it's a, a school in Wooster in South Africa. Uh, we were quite a big school. We were, uh, played at one of some of the biggest tournaments in the country. So it was a great learning school for myself. After that, I went uh, back to a coach at a local high school as well, as well as doing mini rugby coaching for to eight year olds, which is always a really, really blessing, a uh, great blessing. <laughs> you need a lot of patience, uh, but I did at least, I learned that. So I have to say, it's a sport that's opened so many doors for me. Um, I, I can't ever thank, uh, thank the sport of rugby enough. So I'm loving the opportunity to be, come to America and hopefully just give back to the sport that's given so much to me. So I would just like to thank everyone here for everybody who invited us. Thanks for having us here. We really are um, 
enjoy this opportunity to speak to you guys and to help uh, everybody learn a bit more about the sport we all love. So thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. All right, yeah, we're, we're very blessed. Um, I, I will say this, um, rugby um, around the United States is, is growing. Uh, you know, lacrosse and rugby and all these other sports that are kind of, you know, um, on the other side of the big three or big four um, are really growing. And, 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 you know, their parents are looking for something else for their kids to do. Um, so um, I know uh, this, this room is pretty big on football. Right? Am I wrong? <laughs> so everybody knows that where football, you know, came from, rugby. Um, I did my homework. I got about eight pages of, uh, of stuff here. But um, what I'd like to do is open the, the floor up for questions. If you have any questions about rugby, I got a lot of research here that I need to uh, impart. Yes? Being from Western Pennsylvania, where we have football, and we did win on Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was in a high school and talked about, right down in Pittsburgh area, all your rugby, is, I think for the most part, at least has been a club program. When we talk to parents about starting rugby, what we get is, I mean, kill the man with the ball with no rules. I said, it's not like that. I've heard some of the rules they have in rugby. How do you handle parents' groups? who is hesitant because they claim it's more injury prone than any other sport, when truly is the most catastrophic sport there is. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you ever watched a hurling game or a hockey game, but um, those can be pretty brutal too. Um, now, we, we talk about, and we have research that shows that there, there's much less injuries. Maybe the concu in concussions, the number one sport, and I don't know if you know this, is, is football or soccer. Just from a repeated head, and, you know, heading the ball and, and going up, you know, for a ball. So th there's a lot of um, statistics that show that rugby is actually not um, as dangerous as many other sports out there. Um, where rugby differs from football is all our players are behind us, and and we have the ball, so we know we're going to get hit. The only time you can get hit is when you have the ball and you're setting the ball, and you got to let the ball back, and you're rucking, and then you get hit there. But when you're just standing there in football, especially if you're a bad quarterback and you throw an interception, you're going to get hit pretty hard by somebody and the ball's not going to be anywhere near you. So I think um, there's a lot of different, if you, if you noticed, um, a lot of NFL teams are bringing in rugby teams to teach how to tackle properly. Um, we were taught as kids to put your face mask right in the, the center and, and get that hit. Um, now they're talking about how you track and, and go sideways into a tackle. Um, but we do talk about, you know, the, the, the um, well, you got youth, you know, they have to deal with it on a daily basis. Um, and I think once they watch it and they see it, um, I think they go, oh, it's not as dangerous as, as it appears. And uh, by the way, Pittsburgh's doing a great job, I think, with, um, with their youth programs. Um, they're, they're coming along quick, that, that, that western Pennsylvania area. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. So, any other questions? Yes. For many of us are not familiar with rugby. Can you give us the rules of rugby, the size of the field, and things of that nature? How many guys are on the field? How many guys are on the team? So um, the question is, uh, you know, um, what the rules of rugby are, how big the field is, um, how many guys are on the team. Um, first of all, we call them laws. They're not rules, they're laws. We're a little bit more strict about our rules, so we say they're laws. <laughs> Don't break the law, right? So, um, and, and we have one referee, and you call that referee sir. Whether it's a man or a woman, don't understand, you call him sir, right? Um, and Kelly, what do you guys want to handle that? What's that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? ARs on the side. Yes, and we also we have one, one uh, official assistant ARs on the side. Games are usually 80 minutes long, two 40 minute halves. The field is 70 meters, so the football field is 53.7 yards wide by 100 yards, that's 100 yards long. Ours are 100 meters long, which is about 109 meters, and then 70 meters wide, more like a soccer field. You have 15 players uh, going against each other. 
you have a scrum. You guys ever see the scrum when they get together and they, they, they come in? And the scrum happens when there's a minor infraction. That they, you have to stop playing, the ball has to restart. So the ball's put in and you have a guy in the middle, the, the small guy that's called a hooker. So, and, and yes, no, it's not, yes, no. Uh, no, it's not after the game. It's, it's actually, it's, it's actually, the hooker hooks the ball with his foot and he hangs on to two bigger guys, kind of like Cornell size, and those guys are called props because they prop up the hooker that hooks the ball. And then the guys in the scrum that are behind them, you have second rows or locks because they're, they're big like this guy right in front of me. They, uh, <laughs> tall, big guys. And they're the ones that jump up for the ball. What's that? Good looking. Good looking is what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. That, that came out wrong. Um, so, well, actually, some, sometimes they are the good looking guys. Um, so I have to come to the game and we'll teach them at the field. Exactly. So, um, yeah, just it, uh, we'd love to have you come. Um, we're playing uh, Army uh, in two Saturdays. We have this, this weekend off. Um, our women are in Frostburg State this weekend, Sunday. And then our, our, uh, we're playing Army. Both men and women are playing Ar Army. You're playing Kent. The men are playing Army at 10 and 12. Then after that, then the following week, we play Penn State, and the women play Wheeling at noon and at two. So it's so kind not of not this Saturday, but for the next two Saturdays. Thank you. That's why he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Much smarter than I. Um, so, anyways, um, actually, you know, like doing my research is just amazing how football developed from rugby. The, the, uh, Walter Camp and you know Professor at Yale. I'm sure you guys know all the history of how that came about and the, the, they started blocking and the, the one essential difference in the law is we don't have blocking so somebody can't go behind us I can't run behind a guy and have him stand in front of me and block and that was the one essential difference that started with Walter Camp and that they started the flying wedge and they started if you read history I'm, I was blown away by the amount of information and Mr. Wikipedia really did a lot of research. Um, and then he Googled a couple things. Um, so it, it's just amazing to see. So um, the word touchdown comes from, in football, comes from what you have to do in rugby. You actually, you actually touch the ball down, and, and it's called a try. The reason it was called a try is because back in the day, you would touch it down, and you got a chance to try to kick it for your points. So they called it a try because you got a chance to try Then they started adding points to that, what you actually did to get that try. So then it became a try. Where touchdown is what you have to do in football. You have to touch it down in rugby. You can kick for three points anywhere on the field, just like a field goal. You know drop kicking is still a legal win in the NFL, right? Yep, yep. We still do it in, in rugby. So um, it's just amazing uh, to see all the information out there and the similarity between rugby and football. Next question. Yes? What, what, I live up by Walsh. What field do you guys play on? you play on the football? Good question. <laughs> um, for, we first got there, and the, the kind people at um, Hoover Vacuum Company, I believe, donated all the, all the land, right? That's correct. Still there? So um, we're, they actually are building our own rugby pitch in the back behind. But right now we're playing on the main stout field. New field will be back by the girls' softball. No, it'll be behind the tennis courts. Oh, okay. Going back in there. By the tennis courts, yeah. Yes, yeah. They put the rugby team back in the corner so that no one can see what we're doing, which is a great idea. I'm just saying. Just kidding, doctor. Just kidding. What kind of attendance are you getting? Um, at the last first couple of games, what tennis? What what um, attendance are we getting? We're actually getting very uh, a lot. I mean, you've been in a couple of our games. Are you familiar with the new bleachers that we have, the new seating and the press box? That's actually going to be the visitor side. We're building the stadium out. We're filling it up every time. So we, I think just out of curiosity, people come because they want to see what's going on. We were actually just uh, our first game as Walsh University, um, a big night. We had, we're on Friday night. Um, Friday Night Rugby on the Rugby Network, which is a nationally streaming service. Um, and we played uh, uh, Belmont Abbey, I believe, on Friday night in front of you know an audience of millions. I mean, I, I don't know what the viewership was, but it was pretty big. 
So it's actually becoming very, uh, obviously my opinion is as a director and these guys as coaches, not enough is the right answer of what our attendance should be. We want as many people there as possible. Yes? You're playing on a lot of different side schools. Are there divisions in rugby? Well, that's what makes this whole thing interesting is we're a school of how many students, Dr.? 2,200. 2,200. We are playing against Army, West Point. We're playing against Navy in Annapolis. We're playing against uh, Penn State University. We're playing against um, Kutztown, about, I don't know, 2,000, 20,000. Um, St. Bonaventure is more our size. But we have reached a, 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 a kind of an, uh, a level that we're playing against the best teams in the country. In rugby, that's kind of how it works. It's not so much NCAA where, you know, you, you fit into a, a, a size school. So it just depends on how good you are. I'm sorry? Can you explain the divisions of rugby? Like Division 1? Division, division, yeah, division, uh, we have Division 1, Division 1 AA, Division 2, and Small College. And small College is probably where we belong, but we're just, with coaches like this and everything that Walsh does for us, we're just that good to play against the big guys. In D1. And we are in D1, I'm sorry. Yes? Are tickets for, for admission? No, as a matter of fact, um, uh, I'll give you a dollar if you come. No, just <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, just we want we want everybody out there. We just want you to learn, come, and have fun, and be part of the whole uh, day. Yes, yes. We beat Ohio State, by the way. The last thing. No disrespect. Swords up! Swords up! <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, something that um, Jason brought up. Don't forget, as a member of the club. Your membership card gets you into all sporting events, including rugby, at Walsh University. Okay, so as a member, you'll get free admission into rugby games. And, and also football, and also volleyball. Sprint. sprint. Sprint football, we have a sprint football that started a year before we got there, correct? So there's a lot of football going on on campus, quite a bit. Uh, any other questions? I'm sorry. Uh, I got. I, I got to take this one. You guys understand. <laughs> I have to take this one first. My question is for Coach Kelly. What's your record currently with the girls? We are currently four and one. We just had our first loss to St. Bonaventure by two points. So it was a really good game. But these girls are something else. We've always struggled with numbers, and I'm telling you what. The reason we're at the D1 still is because. At the end of the day, the past two years, we went up against the Michigan University. We are at that level, and these girls have that commitment and the skills. So working with the lower numbers, we build up our roster. We get walk-ons. I've got a handful, at least five walk-ons this year. They're already starting. The girls are helping them out, and it's just amazing, and we can't wait to go play those higher-up teams and put Walsh on the map. So we do get uh, women from you know soccer that maybe you know just start for one reason or another their heart's not in it or lacrosse or, or whatever it may be. Uh, I will say this: one of our players that Kelly played with right now, Olivia Leatherman, is playing for the U.S. national team and not a U20 team. She just she's just turned 20, right? She's playing with the senior women in Japan and she's in England right now. She's in England right now. So those are the type of, of, of women that we're trying to attract to Walsh that are kind of serious about going to that next level. Did anybody watch the Olympics, especially the women's uh, Olympics? That, that was pretty thrilling to see them get a bronze medal. Um, those women were, were pretty, um, you know, pretty good, I think. Um, my daughter played, both my kids played. My daughter was an All-American scrum half. 
Um, now she's a police officer in the Metro Park system, so she's still allowed to tackle bad guys, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Maybe just a short commercial. So, uh, 27 teams football. We have NCAA. We're D2. We also have sprint football. That used to be known as lightweight football. Actually, George Hollis came from that, and we play same thing. We play West Point and all the big schools there. But if you go to your app store and you pull up the Walsh University app, it has the schedule along with the results, the teams, the rosters for every sport. So to take advantage of your member benefit as a luncheon club member, if you want to go to any of these games, all of it will be right there on your phone. The repository does not give us any help at all in this regard, as most of us know. Um, so just go to your app, and we'd welcome you for rugby, for football, for basketball, for volleyball, for all of it. The Walsh University app. Does that, does that uh, app also, I know some of the kids, if you go to so many games, you can get pretty good swag, from what I to understand. <laughs> Is that true with just the general public? That's true. If you go to the game, when you open up your schedule, it, you can check in, and it gives you points, and as you accumulate points, then you get gear. President Collins. <laughs> yes, sir. So I've, I've had a chance to be a lot, around a lot of different universities around the country. I don't think I've ever seen a president who has crowd surfed during a volleyball game, been at the top of the, what do they call it? The I hold the NCAA record as the oldest person the cheerleaders have put in the air. <laughs> Four, Four years ago, I broke the record at 61. <laughs> Two years ago, I broke the record again at 63, and last month, just to make sure, they put me in the air again at 65. <laughs> Was there a question, sir? I'm sorry, I took over. I just want to know the most dangerous thing you've done. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yes, yes, sir. What kind of a season do you have, and how do you reach a championship? Yeah, so um, uh, the question is, the question is, uh, what kind of season do we have? Um, when is our, our competitive season? When is the playoff season? Um, we have, during the, 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 the structure that we're in, National Collegiate Rugby, we have our season during the fall, and then we start our playoffs probably about November 9th to 15th, right in there, and you will be able to qualify and have a playing game, then you go to a um, a quarterfinal, so there's eight teams left, and then you'll play all the way up until last year we were in Houston playing for a national championship on December 9th, I believe. Um, you guys were the week before, right? This, yep. The second? Um, so we, we uh, competed for a national championship in December. Now there's also, because of the West Coast teams and the Southern teams, they'll, they start school a little bit later. They start in late September. They're on trimesters or, or something different. But they also have the weather to be able to compete kind of through February and March. And then they can have their national championship in spring and in, in, in May. So they'll have theirs in May. Obviously, there's that device because of seasonality and because of weather. We just don't have the ability to train through and start another season in February and go forward. Now, we're working on getting a dome, but if anybody has money, we can build a dome, raise your hand. Um, but so, anyways, that's uh, kind of a, um, that's kind of how that, that works. So. Last question, Jason. Uh, two more questions. One more question. Yes. There you go. Right here. Yes. Coach, I gotta tell you, um, I'm seriously impressed with uh, what you guys have done at Walsh. Um, but did I get it correct from the women's? Uh, did they beat Michigan? We have not. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I, see, oh, I see where, I see where that is going. Not yet. Oh, sure. we, we might have room for one more question because that was more of a statement. <laughs> I believe. They're gunning for them. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. 
we had a chance to do our show at the Winking Lizard a few yes. weeks back. Thank you very much for that. We have, we have a lot of uh, servicemen and women in here, and my, uh, my father, our, our, his father, my grandfather served in World War II. Tell them the story about Remy, Frazier, and also... Uh, you know, uh, ten. Ten. Ten is yeah, please, yeah, tell that story. Okay. It's very, it's, it's, so it's, um, we, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, we had a couple of uh, young, young players make the All-American team and be able to travel this past summer. And, and they put together a team to be able to go and play against uh, French teams um, during the summer. So our All-American team, first game was uh, against the team in Normandy right near Normandy to celebrate the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. So they played a military team, I believe, and beat them. Remy Thompson, who's um, half French, half English. Tanner Smith, who's from Indiana, Pennsylvania, um, home of Jimmy Stewart, I believe. And uh, Frazier Leslie, who's from Australia. So they all three went and joined this team. Their second game was to uh, play against um, a, a university side, um, and they won that game. The third game was to play against a, um, a combined university side, but that was to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 1924 Olympics, in which the USA beat France in the final to win the last gold medal in 15s rugby. Now we've seen sevens played, but 15s was 1924. And I got some history about what these kids had. They, they left from <coughs> University of California Davis up by Oakland, traveled across the United States, had to get, up, had to get their own fare. The IOC didn't have any money. There were three teams. There was Belgium, um, France, and U.S. in the competition. They had to get away to France. When they got to France, they, their, their stuff was stolen from them. They were treated very rudely. During the final, when they beat them, the Parisians stormed the field and literally stole all their stuff. <laughs> After, I, just kidding. When they played the Star Spangled Banner, they booed during the Star Spangled Banner. So the IOC said, well, we can't have any of this. That's not in what you know, we're all about. So they kind of removed rugby from the Olympics. Now, just because a couple of Parisians act that way, they shouldn't have got rid of rugby, is my opinion. However, um, they, they haven't, uh, I think 2016, they added the rugby again, and hopefully we'll get back 15. So it was kind of cool. By the way, they won that. They won all three. The, the All-Americans won all three games in France, just like we did in Normandy, and just like we did <laughs> in uh, 1924. <laughs> um, and I'd like to thank everybody. I appreciate everybody for coming and listening. Um, once again, I got a lot of information if you want to talk. <laughs>